With the help of some very handy external tools, you can use Scribus to generate images on the fly. This is possible with the use of render frames. In this video, we're going to take a high level look at using render frames in Scribus. So let's get started. Welcome to class. Render frames provide users the ability to utilize tools outside of Scribus to generate and import images on demand. Initially, render frames were designed to give users the ability to generate special typesetting formats for mathematical notation. However, this feature has been expanded to allow users to add their own third-party image rendering tools with varying degrees of capability such as the creation of formulas, musical notation, charts, and more. Each external tool may come with its own commands and properties you will need to set in order to get the results you're looking for. In this video, we're not going to cover all of the properties and settings that can be set with all of the third-party plugins that are currently shipped with Scribus. However, if you would like us to go into more detail on a specific tool, let us know in the comments section. And we'll put links in the description to the websites for each of the tools we cover. With Scribus running, let's take a look at the third-party tools we have available to be used with render frames. We can do this from the standard menu by selecting File, Preferences, and then External Tools. Now, in the right pane, you should see configurations for external tools, and at the bottom of the list, you should see a selection called Render Frames. As you can see in this list, we have Latex, New Plot, Lily Pond, Dot, POV Ray or Persistence of Vision Ray Tracer, and Z Latex. To the right of each plugin name, in parentheses, is the command line or terminal command Scribus sends to the tool when the tool is used in a render frame. To the right of the list of tools is a series of buttons that allow us to move the items up and down in our list, add and delete tools Scribus can use, and change command line text sent to the tool. Below the list of available tools is a property for identifying the external tool editor. Usually, this should be set to a standard text editor, such as Notepad or GEdit or Vim. There is also a section for indicating if you wish to start with an empty frame, meaning that you want to enter all the required third-party tool markup rather than modifying a predefined template. You can also select to use the Scribus Embedded Editor instead of an external editor. Some external editors may be more useful than the Embedded Editor as they may provide syntax highlighting or other features for the markup you're working with. Finally, you can make a selection to force the DPI resolution to a value you select. This may come in handy, especially if you're looking to print your publication and are looking for a crisp, clear result. However, you will want to keep in mind that forcing the DPI resolution will apply to all render frames used in your publication and cannot be limited to the specific tool used. Let's make a few adjustments here and select OK. Now that we have our preferences set, let's go ahead and divide our page into a few sections, and then we can create a few render frames. We can add render frames from the shortcut ribbon by selecting the icon that looks like a gear and then clicking on the canvas. To get our frame to fill the space between our guides, we can hold the shift key down on the keyboard before clicking on the canvas. 
For the purposes of this video, we'll go ahead and add all four of our render frames to our canvas. If you zoom in on our render frames, you can see that the content of each frame looks a little fuzzy. No, Scribus isn't broken. Instead, by default, Scribus is reducing the image resolution that you see in the editor to increase the application's performance when there are many images. To get a better representation of the final image, you can right click on the render frame, select preview settings, and then select full resolution. You should now see a very crisp and clear image. Now let's take a look at editing our first render frame. We can do this by right clicking on our render frame and selecting edit source. An editor window will appear. The editor is broken up into two sections. On the left is the internal code editor, and on the right are the tools and properties associated to the external third-party tools. On the right panel, you can see that the resolution for this tool is set to automatic and that the program we're using to generate an image is set to latex. This means that we'll be using the latex markdown on the left in the code editor to generate our image. Let's make a quick modification to our markdown and then select update in the bottom left corner of the editor window. You should now see the updated image rendered on our canvas. So let's select OK. Let's jump over to our second render frame and try a different external application. Again, we'll right click on our render frame and select Edit Source. When the editor window appears, we'll change the program dropdown from Latex to new plot. Our internal code editor window on the left should now be updated with sample markup. And just as before, we can make a few modifications to our code markup, select update, and then OK. With latex, we can render mathematical notation, and with new plot, we can render charts and graphs. Now let's take a moment to look at musical notation engraving with Lily Pond. We can do this by right clicking on our render frame and selecting edit source. When the editor window appears, we will change the program dropdown to Lily Pond. You should now see the markdown on the left update. Just as before, let's go ahead and make a few modifications to our markdown and select Update and then OK to view the results. As you can see, Lily Pond allows us to create music sheets that include chords, notes, and even vocals. Now let's jump over to our last render frame and like before, we'll right click and select Edit Source and we'll change the program to POV Ray. POV Ray allows you to use their markdown to create images based on three-dimensional shapes, shading, and lighting. If we don't update anything and we just select OK, you should see the newly updated render frame of a rectangle dividing a sphere. With a little knowledge of POV Ray Markdown, we can make a few edits to add texture, shadow, and lighting to our rendered image. And these are just a few tools that you can use within Scribus to render images on the fly. In this video, we discussed how to use render frames to generate images for our publications in Scribus. If this video helped you or you would like to have us cover a specific topic in Scribus, let us know in the comments section. See you in the next one.